and that's our goal. Now, as a hindsight, when I talked to Tom uh, on the front end, I did say down the end, we talked about it. It's not 100%. Unfortunately, if it was, we wouldn't need the police department, okay? I, I can never guarantee, but I can guarantee you this. For every 10, 18 year olds that you hire right out of high school for your jobs, right? Yeah. <laughs> they're not, they're not going to make it, okay? So for every 10 that I have, they're not all going to make it. And I do get people that, unfortunately, you know, when you make the kind of money you did turning tricks or selling drugs, you know, and after you're, if you get hungry and hungry and hungry, sometimes that temptation is very strong. It really is. And it's hard to look at my $8 an hour job and say, you know, why should I do this? But until we get them to understand that it's for what's inside of them, what we see, and that's what we do. That's what we do. That's why we have why we have a social media on staff. But we try to involve it all. It's all in our, our contained unit. Uh, and I believe we've kind of overcome some of those things. I don't think Mark, Mark's been over to visit with us, but he hasn't heard too many things about us, I don't think. Uh, but we, we do. We, we take very... Uh, we take sincere pride in developing people that have made errors, okay? And we try to present them back, help them present back to community. You're not going to want all of my people living on the street. I'm going to tell you that, because we do deal with level threes. And that freaks the living genies out of people. And there is a concern. So that kind of concern will always be there, but I can't change that. But what I can do is change the skill sets and the educational level where that person's at, so that hopefully they will make better decisions. And in all honesty, that's all we can ask for the 60 people. <laughs> right? And then, of course, I'll ask it answer your questions. Sure, maybe just interject. You yeah. mentioned it. Um, uh, PPL is the only organization in the metro that will deal with level 3 sex offenders. We have no other resources for them. So that is a huge piece um, for them to represent because, you know, whether, like like you said, whether we like to admit it or not, folks get out of jail and prison. I mean, they don't get locked away forever. So if we don't have resources to deal with that, we're fooling ourselves. And so, you know, especially with the level threes, we can say, oh, we don't want their name we don't want this, we don't want that. But the reality is we don't have that option. And so it doesn't make more sense then to create the ability for them to try and improve so that they can live amongst us and be productive citizens. And, and his organization is the only one that we do. Well, again, I'm Taryn Rong. I work with Restorative Justice Community Action. And we were founded out of neighborhood organizations in 1997. So just to give you a little bit of background on uh, where this project came from, uh, some of the central city's neighborhoods, downtown Minneapolis um, and that area, they were um, dealing with a lot of issues, like you had mentioned, perception issues. So safety things, but also concerns about perception. Um, things like livability offenses, which affect the community as a whole. Uh, Drug-related offenses, possession, open bottle, drinking in public, soliciting prostitution, graffiti, all of those things that sort of deteriorate neighborhoods where you, know, you talk to a long-time resident who lives next door to you and they're frustrated with these things and they're going to be moving out of the neighborhood or businesses aren't doing well because people don't want to come into the neighborhood to do business anymore. And it's like you were, you were saying, all those things sort of deteriorate. Um, so what they did was the neighborhood organizations did a study of uh, what was going on with those crimes in the criminal justice system and found out that these types of offenses that were typically misdemeanors and seen as victimless crimes were sort of backing up the criminal justice system when they were cited um, and sometimes being dismissed. And so there wasn't really a way to um, hold people accountable for some of these offenses. So what they did was try to figure out a way for people in the communities who are impacted by them to have a voice in that process. And they found a model called restorative justice, which is a larger paradigm, um, a way of viewing crime and conflict. So rather than seeing it as a crime against the state, it's really a violation of our relationships with one another. That we not only broke a law, but we hurt somebody, we harmed something. And so then the, um, the way to deal with that is not just to punish somebody, but to figure out a way um, to give back and make amends and try to repair whatever harm was done. So they took this model, they adapted it, and they um, 
put it out there for the community to get involved. So what we do is bring people together around these offenses. We offer this um, as an opportunity, as an alternative to paying the fine of the offense or going to court. We arrange a meeting where they sit down and meet with people who live or work in the area where the offense happened and to talk about what happened, what led up to it, um, who they think was impacted, and then to have an opportunity to speak about how you're impacted personally, how the, your business or your property, um, how your community as a whole is impacted, how you feel about these things going on, and then to work on an agreement to repair the harm. And so like um, uh, our inspector was saying, a lot of times that's some type of service back to the neighborhood, it's an apology to people who are impacted, maybe neighbors, maybe businesses, uh, maybe the neighborhood organization, uh, some kind of personal development. And so a lot of times, too, we, you know, we're talking about how important it is to have jobs and to have housing and all those things, that that can also go into agreements. A lot of people will suggest, you know, we want you to be able to enroll in a program to get your GED. And so it starts um, building that support and the encouragement to, do, to go in a more positive direction. Um, so as a diversion program, um, we offer the option, and, and if they successfully complete the agreement that comes out of the conference, their case is dismissed, and they can get it, apply to get it expired from their record. Um, we also uh, take some higher level offenses uh, from the county, and those are dealt with they, in, in addition to the court process, and so um, some of them will go through the court process and then as a part of, um, rather than make sense to serve or because the probation they'll be um, going through our program. We just started working with the drug court in Tennessee County. Um, they used to just do community service as a part of the drug court and found that this is just putting another thing on them that's sort of arbitrary, just going to some place and doing service. Whereas going through a restorative justice process and listening to, okay, yeah, I did impact the community. And, um, this is a way to give back for that that relates to what they did is a more effective way of um, helping people understand that. I would be happy to answer your question.